Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu alaykum. Salaam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salaam alaykum, brothers. Alhamdulillah. I'm very happy to be here, alhamdulillah. It's my first time in Scotland. Um, I'm from Manchester originally. Uh, I've traveled to many, many countries, over 50 countries. And this is the first time I've come to Scotland, alhamdulillah. And uh, alhamdulillah, it's nice to meet the brothers. And subhanAllah, uh, I'm currently living in Kuwait. So I've just come here for a few weeks. I'm just uh, going around the country, uh, England, Scotland, Wales, uh, just giving some talks, mainly based on Dawah, and specifically Dawah to Christians and atheists. And subhanAllah, you know, it's so important, you know, we, we have a big responsibility as Muslims to convey, especially when we're living in a non-Muslim community, to convey the message of Islam to the people. I wasn't always a Muslim. Uh, I was originally born and raised as a Christian. And from the age of seven, I, I knew that Christianity wasn't the truth, mostly because of my fitrah. As we know, every Muslim, every human being is born in the state of the fitra, you know, with the correct understanding, the ability to understand and acknowledge the correct understanding of Allah, the basics of morality, you know, this is something that's ingrained in our soul, something ingrained in our fitra. So from, from the age of seven, I knew that Christianity was not, not the correct way. Um, I remember I had to write a song about, about God, and my song was Jesus and God. And the pastor, he changed it to Jesus is God. You know, and I was only seven. And I knew that this, this didn't fit with my innate belief in the Creator. So alhamdulillah, throughout my teenage years, I left Christianity, but I, I believed in something. I always believed in something. I always believed that there was a Creator. But it wasn't until I started to travel to Africa, uh, mainly Senegal, Sierra Leone, in West Africa, some of the poorest countries in the world, that I'm interacting with Muslims. You know, being accepted into the Muslim community, even as a non-Muslim, it's overwhelming. Because today, many of the British people, they're leaving faith, they're, re they're leaving religion. You know, even Christianity, it has some roots in Islam. You know, a lot of the morality comes from from originally the truth but they, they're losing that today and subhanAllah today I was sat in the back room and I was watching the brother I don't know if he's here but he was doing the 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 food bank and subhanAllah the people were coming in you know and he's helping them giving them food and I was subhanAllah I was nearly crying because he just reminded me of when I was younger that the English people used to be like this but they've lost it now they've lost it they've lost this sense of community and it's because they don't have any religion they don't have anything that, that brings them together and it's really sad you know especially me even though I'm, I'm a Muslim now I still have a sense that I still feel sorry for them you know because they've lost this they have, they've lost their community their sense of community it's really sad subhanallah and subhanAllah, you as Muslims come into the masjid, maybe you don't even know what you have. You know, so even me, you know, sometimes you're a Muslim and you really don't reflect on what you have until you don't have it. Or when you see other people that don't have it. But we really are special. Alhamdulillah, Allah has chosen us to be Muslim. SubhanAllah, really. You know, many Muslims are leaving Islam as well, you know. People are actually leaving Islam. You know, I did a tour of Pakistan twice. I went to Peshawar, Islamabad, Lahore, Karachi, Muri, GT Road. <laughs> I had the chapli kebab, alhamdulillah. But the point is, I went to many universities. And in the universities, there were some people that had left Islam. Some, people, some of the youth, they said, we're not Muslim. We don't believe in the Creator. So, you know, sometimes we can pretend that it doesn't, it's not affecting us. 
and, but, but it does affect the Muslim community. So it's really important that we, we, we act as one body, you know, that we're helping each other in the community. You know, when we see each other as one community, not just in Scotland, but in the whole world. You know, and appreciate what we have and what Allah has given us. Because subhanAllah, He can take it away anytime. Anytime He can take it away. And I remember there's some brothers in Manchester, they wasn't interested in helping in the dawah. But then they went to university. And the atheists started to give them doubts. And the Christians started to give them doubts. And all of a sudden, now they want to get involved in dawah. Now they want to learn about Islam. You know, that's kind of, it's a bit, it's a little bit selfish, you know, that you only want to learn about Islam or you only want to help and do dawah when it affects you personally. You know, but we, we all have to get involved. We all have to help. And alhamdulillah, you have a good masjid here, which is, you know, is based on knowledge. You know, you have students of knowledge, people who have studied properly. You know, people have come back to the UK with knowledge. You know, you have Quran classes. I met one of the brothers today, subhanAllah. A very young brother, and he, you know, he's, he said he only has two just left, and he's, he's nearly finished Quran. Can you imagine in the UK, our, our children are memorizing the Quran? This is fantastic, subhanAllah. So, it's, I, I, I want to just try to encourage people to, to not forget the wider community. You know, often we, we're thinking about our own self, our own family our own Muslim community, but we also have to extend this invitation to the non-Muslims. So inshallah, I know the brothers have a plan to, to also um, do more dawah, do more you know, outreach to the non-Muslim community to try to introduce them to Islam. So I wanted to just give some advice on how to approach the non-Muslim community. You know, bit, uh, bits of knowledge that you already have but trying to get that, them, that knowledge out of the drawers and you know, out of your mind so you can actually convey it uh, to the non-Muslims, inshallah, when you actually have interaction with them. So first of all, I wanted to speak about dawah to Christians. You know, because there are still many Christians and even people who, don't, who, who claim not to believe in a creator or claim to be atheist, they still know a lot about Christianity. Because many of them were raised within the church, you know, anyone over the age of maybe 25, most of them had some interaction with the church. And so it's important, how do we, how do, we do dawah to Christians? And it's important that before we give dawah, we must have knowledge about our own religion. We must first have knowledge about Islam. And this is one of the biggest mistakes in the dawah, where we, we actually start giving dawah without knowledge so if we begin with the the hadith of the prophet وسلم, where he you know the famous hadith where jibreel salam came to the prophet and asked him what is islam and he replied the five pillars and he said what is iman and he replied belief in allah his angels the books the prophets judgment day and belief in the divine decree and of course, this is the six main articles of faith, the basis of our religion, that we must have a good, firm foundation of knowledge on these things. And many of these topics we've studied. You know, we've studied about the belief in Allah. We've studied about Tawheed. We've studied, we know about the angels and the jinn. We know about Judgment Day. We know about Divine Decree. But often, the topic of belief in the books is one that is kind of rushed over or misunderstood. And this is a common misconception that many Muslims have and many Christians have as well. Because we know that Allah actually revealed books to the previous nations. He revealed the Suhuf of Ibrahim. He revealed the Torah, which was a Kalam Allah, a Kitab Allah, sent down to Musa. He revealed the Zabur, which was a book a book which was the word of Allah sent down to Dawood and he revealed the Injil which was a divine revelation a book which is the words of Allah like the Quran the word of Allah revealed to Isa 
And of course the final revelation which is the Quran You know the, the final revelation The Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him You know over a period of 23 years So these are the five books which are mentioned in the Quran But there were many other revelations You know there's a hadith where the Prophet some said That there were 124,000 Prophets Sent to humanity To all the different tribes, all the different nations and out of these 124,000, there were 315 of them were messengers. 315 of them received a new revelation. They were messengers and the, 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 out of the 124,000 prophets. So it's important that we have this Islamic understanding of the previous books. Because often when people are giving dawah to Christians, they tend to confuse the previous revelations of the Torah, Zabor and Injil with the Bible the modern day Bible the Bible that the Christians and the Jews are using today is something very different to what the Torah, Zabor and Injil was now when we look at the Bible today the Bible is a collection of many different books written by different human beings the Bible today doesn't claim to be a wahi from Allah. It doesn't claim to be the Torah, the Zabur or the Injil. What's confusing sometimes is that Arab Christians, they call the New Testament, which is a part of the Bible, they call this the Injil. So, so, so sometimes we think that, okay, the, the Christians, they believe in the Injil. No, there, there's no Christian who is alive today there's no Christian on the planet today that believes in a kitab Allah sent down from Allah given to Isa alayhi salam. this belief no longer exists so we must understand the difference between the wahi the revelation the books that were revealed from Allah to the messengers and this collection of seerah this collection of biographies about the prophets there's a very big distinct difference between the two does everyone understand that point yeah and subhanallah Allah tells us in the Quran how to give when we understand the correct Islamic perspective of the previous revelations and the perspective of the modern day Christian and Jewish understanding of what they have today then we can give dawah to the Christians and Allah tells us in the Quran he tells us, uh, subhanAllah, he tells us how to give uh, dawah to the Christians. SubhanAllah. Throughout the Quran, Allah is speaking about the oneness of Allah. He tells us, subhanAllah, Qul huwa Allah wa had, Allah hu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufu wa nahad. You know, to discuss Tawheed with them. Discuss the oneness of Allah with them. But this isn't the only da'wah with the Christians. Even specifically with the people of the book, Allah tells us, Allah is telling us, don't argue with them. Don't argue with the people of the book. Accept in the best way. And you hear this a lot of the time. But what is the best way? Allah tells us in the second part, He tells us how to give da'wah to them. He tells us to tell them, we believe what was sent down to us and sent down to you. He doesn't say, go and start quoting the Bible, start discussing all these things about all these verses in the Bible. He tells us clearly to explain to them our perspective of things. Because often when people are giving da'wah to Christians, you find some people memorize more Bible than they do Quran. They know they've memorized more, so many of the verses of the Bible, but then they've neglected the Quran. So Allah tells us in the Quran to discuss and to tell them we believe what was sent down. The actual wahi, what was sent down to us, 
which is the Quran, which is the word of Allah, which is a, a law, it's a, it's a judgment, it's a sharia, it's good news about the, about the, the, the next life, and it's also a warning about the next life. And then also to tell them we believe what was sent down to us and sent down to them, meaning the wahi, the Torah, the Zabur, and the Injil, not the Bible, not what was authored by them, but the, the actual books that were revealed to them. Currently, the Jews and the Christians, they don't believe in a kitab Allah sent down. They believe in these collection of books which are authored by people about the prophets. So Allah is telling us to discuss what was sent down to them. And then he tells us to tell them, our God and your God is one. And we are Muslims. <coughs> this concept of Islam did not begin with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You know, when I, when I heard the ayah where Allah mentions that Ibrahim -Islam was not Jewish or Christian, he was a Muslim. This ayah changed my life. I remember the time when I first heard this ayah. Because subhanAllah, there's no Jew or Christian that claims Ibrahim was a Jew or Christian. But they all believe in him. There's no Jew or Christian that claims Nuh salam, was Jewish or Christian. Because Judaism and Christianity came after these prophets. But they all believe in him. So the question is, what was their religion? Of course their religion was the religion of Allah. Whether you call it Islam or another name, Allah knows best. But we know in the Quran that the prophets are described as Muslims. Musa alayhi salam says he, they are Muslim. Isa alayhi salam, all the prophets mentioned we are Muslims. And that this one religion began with Adam, all the way up to the prophets. And when they understand this, it clicks, it makes sense. Because you're like, subhanAllah, of course, Ibrahim was not Jewish or Christian. You know, so Ibrahim didn't believe Isa -Islam was Allah or the son of Allah. So these things make sense. So when we're actually giving da'wah, we must, you know, give da'wah in the correct way, calling them to, to educate them about what the Islamic perspective of the whole history is. The Islamic perspective of the belief in the books and the belief of the prophets. We can also explain to them the Islamic perspective of prophets. Because in this seerah what they have, this Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and all these other different authors, all these books of the Bible, they actually speak bad about the prophets. They accuse the prophets of bad, evil crimes. And then when we say that Isa is only a prophet, they think that we are somehow degrading Isa salam. Why? Because their concept of a prophet is a criminal. Does that make sense? So when we're saying Isa is a, only a prophet, they think we're bringing Isa down to the level of these criminals, what I mentioned in the Bible. But no, we're showing them that, look, in effect, we're raising all the prophets up to the level of Isa salam. They were not criminals. They didn't sin. They, did, they made mistakes, but they didn't have evil intentions. We believe they were protected from having evil intentions. Of course, they made mistakes. They were human beings, but they didn't intend to disobey Allah. They forgot. They made the wrong judgments, but they were not. They didn't intend to do an evil thing. They were protected from this. So we can teach them the correct understanding of the prophets and show them that it makes sense that if Allah is choosing a human being to receive a revelation, that he would choose the best of human beings, not criminals. So these are just some of the, some of the tips that you can use, some of the good points uh, when actually conveying to the Christians. You can also mention the Islamic perspective of angels and jinn, because their concept is that Iblis was a fallen angel. You can explain that he was a jinn. You can explain the Islamic perspective of angels and jinn. 
and also the other articles of faith. And these six article, articles of faith are the core foundations for someone to understand the truth of Islam. So don't think you have to go into all the misconceptions about Islam, explaining about the hijab, explaining about the beard, explaining about four wives, explaining about terrorism. All these things are not going to help them. The core things that will help them are the six articles of faith, the pillars of Iman. This is what they need. Give them what they need, not what they want. And know that when you're conveying the message, make sure you use certain knowledge. You know, basira, you have to use certain undeniable proofs. Not flimsy arguments, not flimsy debates. You have to know what you're speaking about. SubhanAllah, this ayah, when I first heard this ayah as well, <laughs> it's like every ayah I hear, I'm amazed. Yeah? But this next ayah, when I first heard this, again, it had a huge effect on me. When Allah mentions, uh, uh, when I first heard this ayah, subhanAllah, and you're giving dawah, you know, subhanAllah, you know, Allah is telling, commanding the Prophet to, to say that his way, his path is to invite to Allah with certain knowledge so even just this alone it's enough for all of us to know that we have to do da'wah because why? because the Prophet did it but then to confirm it even more he says mine and everyone who follows me it was enough just to say the Prophet that his way was to give da'wah his way was to invite to Allah with certain knowledge but then to confirm it, to make sure, it's, it's Allah tells him to say, you're mine and everyone who follows me. SubhanAllah. So if, you know, Ibn al-Qayyim said that if you don't invite, you're not on the way. SubhanAllah. In response to this ayah, Ibn al-Qayyim says, if you don't invite to Allah with certain knowledge, you're not on the way of the Prophet, peace be upon him. That is a powerful ayah. When I heard that, it was a big life changer for me. Because it's not enough for us to just like Islam for ourselves. We have to share this message. Why do we need to share it with people? You know, because they need it and they want it. They really want it, subhanAllah. And they need it so badly because they... Uh, they're, they're lost and they're getting more lost as the days go on and it's happening now now it's starting to affect our own youth you know when maybe 20 years ago when the Muslim when the Christians were leaving Christianity for atheism Muslims were laughing at them saying you know is that how weak your faith is but now it's happening to the Muslims it's happening to the Muslim youth as well <laughs> because we're not teaching our youth the core foundations when they ask questions we're telling them that's a, you're not allowed to ask that question but when they're children you need to give them answers you need to give them rational reasons it's like when the first when the big when the first the first 13 years of the life of the Prophet it was all about Tawheed it was all about Iman and a lot of the time Allah gave, the, gave rational reasons for things you know like the alcohol for instance you know he explained that there's good but there's also bad you know you, you, it's, it's kind of rationalizing with them to make them understand because and this is the situation we're in now where the youth they need, to, they need answers you can't just shoo them away and, and say we don't have answers you're not allowed to ask that question and a lot of the time we're not answering the question because we don't know the answer or we're embarrassed because we don't know the answer don't be like that tell your children I don't know 
but I'm going to find out for you. Go and search for the knowledge because Islam has answers. Islam has answers for everything. Anything and everything we have answers in this deen. And we, we you know, we can't, we have to really take it seriously with the youth, you know, because we don't want to lose them. So, Jazakallah khair, I don't want to take too much of your time. Uh, I know it's uh, getting late. So, um, I will leave it there, inshallah. And if anyone has any comments or, or uh, questions, feel free to. Yes, sir. Why I converted to Islam? Because Allah guided me. And people laugh, but that is the reason. Allah is in control of the heart. It doesn't matter what you do, what you say. There's nothing you can do. If Allah doesn't give you that guidance, you will not be a Muslim. And this is also so important when you're giving da'wah. Because you have to know that there's nothing you can say or do to change someone. There's nothing, you know, da'wah is conveying. It's not convincing. The convincing is from Allah. The guidance from the heart, He's in control of that. Da'wah is conveying the message in the best way. You know, our way is to call, to give da'wah, to guide people to the direction. But Allah is in control of the actual hidayah of the, of the person, you know. And of course, Allah uses different means to guide people. You know, I, I always believed in Allah because I was, my fitrah was always there. But of course, some people, when they're raised in a Christian community, <coughs> their fitrah is covered. You know, so sometimes you have to give them arguments to try and uncover that fitrah. But my main thing is I always believed in the oneness of Allah. I never believed Isa was Allah. And um, for me, I had had a lot of interactions with jinn before Islam in Africa. You know, so I knew that there was this parallel world, but only Islam could explain what that world was. Do you understand? And I remember watching a lecture by Dr. Bilal Phillips explaining how the jinn get their information sometimes. You know, sometimes they, some of them can fly and they can hear the commands, what Allah has commanded for the angels. And, and this explained a reality that I knew about. So that was quite impressive for me. Also, um, uh, Surah Falak um, explaining the people tying knots, blowing in knots. I seen this in Africa and I knew that this was the protection from that. So many things, um, you know, just the Quran as a, you know, the, 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 even in English, yeah, I, know, I know it's not the Quran in English, but the, the translation, it, it made a lot of sense. You could tell the tone of voice, the tone of the, the message, it was different. You know, it's, it was, uh, Allah guides you, you know, subhanAllah. It, this is, this is the, the answer. Anything else? Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Shukran. Thank you very much. We'll leave it there. Jazakallah khair.